Hey, we know you like Destiny, but what about League of Legends, Overwatch, CSGO, or PUBG? What if you could game from anywhere? Enter the Predator Triton 700, a gaming laptop that offers impossible power on the go. It's equipped with a 7th gen Intel Core i7 processor and ultra thin 18.9 millimeter chassis. I really want one of these. Yeah, I know, birds. Discover the Predator Triton 700 today. Go to Acer.com, click on store, and enter coupon code CRUCIBLE at checkout to receive 10% off. That's C-R-U-C-I-B-L-E. Hey, welcome to Crucible Radio, where we are laughing about something we just did off mic that <laughs> will get deleted and our listeners will never know about. Actually, you know what? You know what? Listen to the very end of the show and uh, Andrew pull both the setup <laughs> and the delivery. These took place uh, four minutes apart sure, okay. in real time. <laughs> They're at the very end Ugh. for you to enjoy. Andrew's on the road this week and he's like all dragging about. clips around in Pro Tools like these idiots. Welcome to Crucible Radio. It's the podcast about Destiny, PvP. Hi. It's, Destiny 2, the best game ever. It's year two, baby. It's Forsaken. Eat that crow. We are, uh, we're what, three weeks in? Just about. And there's still so much to do. We're still figuring it out. Have I slept in three weeks? I don't know. Probably. I barely have. I tell you. I came back from uh, from Nebraska last week, and I said, you know what? It's all been a lot of fun and games, but you need to buckle down and play <laughs> video games. Knock this stuff out. Everyone's already like 550 or whatever, and I'm cranking along. No, focus. What is your light focus. level, Bert? do this shit. I'm at like 521 right now or something. You're okay. For a week off? Hey, you're doing yeah. great, man. I focus more on the drops. I want to get the stuff, do some of the quests, get some of the gun. We'll talk about it. We'll talk about it. I'm mm-hmm. doing okay. You know, I'll catch up. <laughs> well, I mean, you got a sort of forced hiatus at an inopportune time, but I think Swain and I have also mentioned that we are very fine with sort of taking our time uh, with this sort of expansion versus previous ones where I've, you know, showed up at the reef, gone to Zur or whoever and bought like 200 exotic engrams and got every <laughs> exotic literally standing there. And, and I'm totally fine with not doing that this time. And while I had some stuff saved up, I've really been taking it slow. And and currently my light levels, uh, almost 350, but that's because the weekly reset gave me just endless stuff to do. Uh, but I mean, I've taken my time with it. You said three fifty. Ah, everyone's always saying three. I, I know there's like four people going like, oh, don't you mean 550? Uh, was I, I was one of them. Yeah, I was the silent other one, but it's fine. Well, I know <laughs> I know Dan is the going to be the loud, obnoxious one on Discord when I do it. But yes, but I'm getting there. Like it, there's so much stuff and I'm okay with it if I don't see it immediately or if I just catch a glimpse or if I know it's this cool thing and I'm like, yeah, like I'll do that tomorrow night because I don't have to do everything. Uh, so like, you know, did that new strike, but days after it was released and it was cool to have something really, really, truly new at least 10 plus days into the expansion. Cause I'm going to do it a hundred times <laughs> now. Mm-hmm. I already know. It's really weird. Um, how much this game is different in like, a, like the, from one expansion to the next, like where mine really yeah. like turned things up a little bit. But between this and the previous, it's just so different. There's so mm-hmm. much, there's so much to do, and there's so many options. And I think I, I mean, I address, I said this on Twitter earlier in the week, but like, I didn't think it was possible. But I feel like they've struck a really good balance between people playing casually and people playing like very intensely. Um, mm-hmm. You, you kind of hit on it a little bit, Bones, but. I can choose what to do and what not to do. And it's like, it almost entirely goes through the bounty system. And yeah. each day you kind of have your, your chances. Like you get a chance at doing a bunch of things or you could do zero of the things. <laughs> and you can also choose to like focus on something you really enjoy doing. And mm-hmm. you will see, you will still see some sort of level of like, progression whether that's through triumphs or it's finishing your bounties or doing like your milestone for the week 
there's so much like meat on the bone in every direction that you can just kind of, all right, yeah, I'm going to focus on this for the day, kind of play it for a while. Um, I felt like we also talked about it in discord. It was like, we, for me this week, I was waiting. I was just waiting for my gambit arms to drop. And it's not even, ex- yep. I haven't gotten any exotics except for the quest ones. And when it dropped, I was so excited. And it was like, it was so weird for me to be like super excited about a legendary drop. But I got, I got super stoked. Yeah. <laughs> Want those uh, arms? Gotta get those arms. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like it was, it was a ton of fun and I like that feeling and it made me feel like my casual time invested was worth it. This is like the first time that I've ever sat down and like actually made a spreadsheet of like, what are my goals in this? What am I trying to accomplish? And like, what do I have to do for each and try and figure it out? Like, okay, you know, if I'm going to grind this quest out, I should probably do this one first so I can get points for this one while I'm doing it, yada, yada. Um, but yeah, like to the point where it feels like, I suspect, Swain, like you and I are almost playing different video games at this point. Like we're both in Destiny, but we're just getting different, Some <laughs> only occasionally overlapping things out of it. I also <laughs> just checked and saw, oh shit, I've got a full Gambit set. I should go get that powerful and great. I, I oh, totally man. like, I don't, I don't really care about the Crucible bounties all that much because they just kind of complete themselves really quickly. Yeah, yeah. And I, like, I'll, I'll pick these, I'll pick these five up and not really focus on them. But there's something about like other ones that I'm like, oh yeah, but that one's gonna take a little bit of like, maybe my loadout has to change, maybe I need to do something different. But I very much enjoyed like I played a lot of Gambit whenever I got on this week, and damn good at it. Damn good at it. But people love to talk so much smack to me. (laughs) We're listening right now. Please, if we're on the same team, just save it. Like, send it to me on Reddit or Twitter. I don't care. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you for the listen. They can save you some trouble in making fun of them publicly for it. It doesn't help us when you're mad during the game and you're on my team. I'll still win it for us anyway, but (sighs) too many this week to, to count. Well, I guess along those lines, like, what are y'all doing in Destiny? This Gambit. Week? All right, I have Twain report. <laughs> I've been pretty hard on the on the power level light grind. I know it's not light anymore, but that's what we're calling it. Uh, the raid dropped, and you know, not getting into it, but the whole can you do it on the first day thing was crazy, and I was a little disappointed that my blind run the next day couldn't be much of anything. Uh, when previously, you know, we get up to the end boss and then look up a guide or whatever. That being said, the, the raid is really cool and I want to beat that thing. So I'm trying to catch up and just become a valuable member of any raid team. I'm going to give a quick shout out to Myelin Games on YouTube. Uh, they do the Destiny Down Under podcast. I've been listening to all of his YouTube videos like while playing the game. And he like perfectly lays out all of the lore for everything. And it's amazing. And it's everything I, I need. Because I couldn't find that in any other. Uh, I don't know. No one does it as well as him, I think. So yeah. shout out to him. Word. Go there, check it out. Respect. Myelin Games. I'm kind of waiting until my collection is like really fleshed out. And then I'm going to like get, get some whiskey, put on some music and like put on the soundtrack and just read the lore like in a month yep. from now. Because there's too much of it right now. That was part of it. It was like, I, I, he's like, if I have this part of the story put together. He's like, there's probably way more. Like I have, we haven't unlocked it all yet. So when it does, I'll update you. Super exciting. It's really good. I will say the story is really good right now. Yeah. There's some cool glimpses I've seen so far. Like when I was first just going into the triumph menus to like make the flashy thing go away. Nah. I was like, all right, I should just click on all these lore things. I'll come back and read them later. And then I just like got stuck in a lore hole. <laughs> I'm just like standing in, <laughs> in like the middle of a map somewhere, just like halfway through a mission, just reading lore. Uh, that's good. Well, I did a couple things uh, that I hadn't done yet. This is the first week I did the uh, Ascendant Challenge. This week says you got to like, there's this like big shattered... Um, taken alternate descendant realm thing and it's like a huge climbing and jumping puzzle with all these things floating in space and then you get up top and you gotta fight a guy 
And it was just like, I was glad it was something that you could solo because I kind of wanted to take my time with it. And also I'm a loner. Um, but it was like really pretty. I, mm. I, I thought it was a, it was a nice little experience. Like I felt taken out of the world into, um, just, yeah, dreamy city. It's so big. There's so much there. Taken um, out of the world. <laughs> oh, 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 Yeah. Okay. <laughs> also, uh, Hey, this week, Iron Banner is back. And, um, oh, we have, we've been gushing for so so long in this episode, it's time to bring us crashing back down. <laughs> well, I got something I need to say. And uh, I don't think it's a controversial opinion, because if you disagree with me, you're a fucking idiot. <laughs> um, but I'm, I can feel myself. I'm getting spicy. I got I to gotta level this one out. I got to say this one fairly and calmly and coolly. Andrew, can you give me a very cold take? Not too hot. Here's the thing. The Crucible is a finely tuned machine. You build your whole loadout around being able to like, ah, oh, this hand cannon three taps. They've got a hand cannon that can three tap. I've got a hand cannon that can three tap. We're going to fight each other. And then all of a sudden you bring in this light level thing and it's like, well, I can now five tap you and you can two tap me. Uh, it's just not fun. Like, it's fun for the person with the light level. But even then, here's... Cold take, cold take. Here's the thing. You have to use your highest light stuff. Like, if you just got a cool drop of something at 500 and you want to use it, oh, well, you can't use it in Iron Banner because <laughs> it just doesn't work well. Even if the rest of your stuff's way up there, it's like, yeah, okay, you're not going to die as fast, but... The, I think it's it throws it all out of balance. I know everyone was asking for it. They said, well, made Iron Banner <laughs> special. And I'm here to tell you politely and calmly, you were all wrong on this one. That's fine. People are allowed to have different opinions. You, this one happens to be wrong and they should make <laughs> this go away because I hate it. And I normally love Iron Banner. This one is uniquely unfriendly to... Solo queue players, it is uniquely unfriendly to non-570, just did the raid fire teams. Like, I ran into so many big name streamers with their first full fire team. So that. that's the thing there. You just said it at the end there. Like, for I agree with you. I don't know why power level in a PvP setting has ever been like a, a selling point. I don't know what that does to the game that makes me go, ooh, yay, want to play that. So first of all, just weird premise, but in the context of Forsaken, where the grind is back, the hobby is back in quotes, and there's all this ways to raise your power level, the benefit goes to people who are the furthest in like mostly PVE events. Yes. And that if you've done Ugh. some of the raid, you're at a better spot. And if you've only done PVP, and while I will say you should do all the game, if you've just been in love with the Luna grind or something like that so far, and you wanted to be the first to that, you're in a shitty spot with your light level. Your Luna's garbage. So right now. now you can't use it in, in in Iron Banner. It doesn't make any sense in this context. I think this is just something like a uh, let's just go about the business type of thing. Like they were intending to just keep things rolling, making sure we have something happening every week to kind of keep the forsaken hype rolling along and i think iron banner was just part of that like let's you know go right into it bring iron banner back here's the armor for it here's the weapons for it it's part of the whole release and the bigger picture is that like you said this light level grind is very long right now and almost tedious and it takes a <laughs> lot of materials like it's it's not it takes a lot of stuff to infuse or you just spend all your time swapping things out and not using exactly what you want. So what ends up happening is you have these disadvantages in Iron Banner. Uh, like you said, going towards the people that have done PBE. It would be great if these, like even if it was just the Iron Banner bounties, if the Iron Banner bounties gave you such a big leap that it felt like you were playing PVE for the past two weeks, or at least like the progression, because those Iron Banner bounties are lengthy. Mm -hmm. They're very lengthy. And you're going to spend like a couple of days trying to f knock those out. Um, if you are like me, uh, you don't have a ton of time. So I don't know. I, I, I kind of get it. I kind of get the idea of like having 
it not be for everyone, but if there was more PvP paths to get the light level, then it would probably be a little bit better. I just, like, Iron Banner has plenty of identity as it is. They added the whole three cap thing, which I really like. Like, I think that adds a whole new layer to control. It's fun. And also it's banner. It's when you buddy up and you've got your six fire team and you're just playing regular old matches. It's fun. You don't have to, like, just let it be that. Don't add this thing that just makes it so, like, I feel like I'm, like, doing a strike at at too low (laughs) of a light level. Like, that's not fun. I didn't think... I didn't have that happen to me in like the first time I went to the Dreaming City and I was too low and it was like, oh man, I wish PvP could feel like this too. <laughs> I uh, okay, cold take. Cold we take. we four man Iron Banner <laughs> <laughs> movie of the month. All yeah. right, all right. Let's um. All right, you whiny bunch of complainers. Yeah, let's talk about drops because like we've been in it now long enough to have gotten. Maybe not everything we wanted, still plenty to chase, but like we've started to get some things that are like, oh yeah, this is it. Um, and I want to talk through them. Uh, we definitely got to talk about some exotics. We got to talk about just no, regular we legendary weapons. This <laughs> man doesn't have um, any. Hey, he's just got none. That's, I got a that's sweet rough, pair of lion rampants and a Kepri's horn that oh, uh, sick, dude. are doing me great <laughs> right. right now as infusion. I mean, you got the quest exotics. We've talked oh wait, about I, I, will, I will say it is very nice that exotics only infuse with glimmer. Yeah. It is the shining part of the fact that you get duplicates like, Oh wow. I got this extra Kepri's horn. It is a ton of light ahead of what I need it on my helmet right now. So it's great. That doesn't require all of my master workers to put it into something. So let me ask this before we get into the weapons. Cause I think we got a lot to talk to talk about there. I was trying to figure out like, cause we've got all these random roll armor pieces now. Like, have I got any armor drops that I'm particularly excited about. And I was thinking about it and it was like, I had, I was looking through all my armor and it was like, there's one piece in there where it's like, Ooh, that's inspiring. That's a good role. I really want to build something around it. But the idea of like putting together an armor set and putting mods in it and putting a shader on, a shader on everything, but like saying like, okay, I made some armor and now I'm going to infuse this up and have it be my thing. Like the, the idea of starting that at this point just seems so impossibly far away at this point. Like I couldn't imagine putting mods and armor at this point. I have a look that I'd like right now that I'm like trying to perfect and I'm wondering whether or not I want to, as things drop, I'm putting things on and seeing like, oh, this looks good. This looks good. In the end, I'm just going to probably look at like a list of perks and be like, what would the ideal perk list be? Be, do I have it? Do I look yeah. good in it? And then kind of just go from there or play the thing that would get me that and grind for it. But I don't know. The mods are really nice. And I think, yeah, they're cool. I, I think like it's them. worth putting them on your armor and dismantling when you need it. Just dismantle the piece. If you, but, but I got, I got to like, I want to put. I got this good helmet that I like and I want to put a mod in it, but it's like, I shouldn't do it because what if I have to dismantle it to get it out? I might never get this roll again. Yeah, but if it's a good roll, then you're going to keep it in there. Yeah, but what if I put a different one, put a different mod in there, right? Well, it's save maddening. up your mod components and buy another damn mod. You, All right. You nerd. I, okay. Well, <laughs> I do want to talk about this one helmet that I got because it's just like the one piece where it was like, ooh, that's a build right there. That That I'm doing. It's a, a Reverie Dawn helmet. Um, it's got pump action on it, which gives you bonus super energy on shotgun kills. And it's got shotgun reserves on it. Alternate perk is a precision weapon targeting. So hand cannons, bows, snipers, slug shotguns, all those get the boost if I'm not feeling the shotgun. But I basically always have a shotgun. And I thought like, oh yeah, that's like, that's like going off at the beginning of a Crucible match. And it's like, oh shit, I got my super that much quicker. And... And keep picking up bricks. I'm gonna have extra bricks, more shots, not run out of ammo. Like, I don't know. Like, that was just the first time where I like building armor sets. I like having a theme and like getting inspired by a piece and stacking stuff around it to make it work. And it was like, I got that one roll and I was like, okay, this is, this is something. I could do something with this. There's a, I don't know, there's something about all these mods. They, I feel every single one when I put it on, like, they are worth every single mod component 
all of the grind to get them. So worth it. You should all buy them. Get the Icarus Grip one. It's amazing. Buy the one that does the aim assist. That's amazing too. All of the, like if you put all the armor mods on, there's a significant increase in your uh, recharge rates. It's all good. And it really does add another layer. Bonesy, you you playing this armor game yet? You committed? (sighs) And they like to change it up. I mean, yeah, I'm... Since I'm grinding light so hard, I found a couple pieces where I'm like, this is good. Maybe I can throw a shader on this, at least for today. Uh, I'm liking the passive stuff on a lot of the leg perks are very good. Like they have weird names like perpetuation and dynamo. And I don't totally remember what each of those do. Uh, But I like the ones where it's like, okay, you use your class item and you get more class item energy. That's cool. Uh, I like there was one that you use class ability and you get super energy and i'm like okay no i don't have my dynamo. i don't have my hunter totally leveled up but that's going to be nasty because you can roll far more often than you can drop a warlock rift like that sort of thing that sounds cool so i'm beginning to theory craft but right now using a lot of just my highest light or with luna factions trying to be helpful and generally sort of saving like one of each right now i've been really sort of not careless but sort of i don't care if i replace a gear with some higher power i'm like I assume I will get something similar. It doesn't seem that it's so far out there. And honestly, I'm not even looking at the masterworks because it's just all apparently like elemental resist. I'm like, all right, so cool. I have like 2% resisting to, to arc. So it's all just sort of like whatever right now, but I've noticed some pieces uh, I like, and I've noticed ones that look good and I will definitely like keep my eye out for better roles on those. Uh, The reverie dawn, stuff is pretty cool i love the gambit gear on the warlock and i have a really nice helmet so that one i was like gear is nice yeah i'm master working this one and if i get a chess piece with better rolls i'm going to make sure to to save that one and stuff like that and hopefully be able to end up with a guardian that i think looks very cool and um, we'll see if i have multiple armor sets but yeah not not quite there yet where i'm really carefully looking all right well let's uh let's talk about something that we we do have to talk about. Let's talk about um, weapons, legendary weapons. What drops we got yet? Uh, I want to talk about pulses because it's like it's feeling like a pulse rifle time of year. There's a lot of options <laughs> right now. I, I'll start real quick and say that uh, I'm still hoarding, and I am. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Not delete nothing. I am not using much outside of two loadouts. I have two loadouts <clears throat> that I use. And they are for Gambit, and they are for PvP. Gambit well, what, is... What are they? Yeah. Uh, well, actually, I have two loadouts for Gambit, but mostly it's Ace of Spades and the Ikelo Shotgun and a Crooked Fang for Heavy. But then I'll switch to Duke, Risk Runner, Crooked Fang, depending on the enemy type. So if it's Fallen, for sure Risk Runner. It's insane how good Risk Runner it's is. It's really against. good. <laughs> um, Even... Um, even against Cabal a, a couple yeah. times. Maybe just because a teammate was throwing pulse grenades at me. And also oh. if there's wizards. If there's wizards, then oh, that yeah. tends to help. Um, me, me and Bones have the same duke, and it's awesome. And I love using what it. What duke you for got? Teaming. What you duking? I Rampage have, Outlaw? Yeah. Uh, Rampage uh, yeah. and Outlaw. God needs Outlaw. It's yeah. a monster. And uh, I use that for, obviously, pairing with the Runner. And then for PvP... Uh, it's Ace of Spades, Aaron Till, and uh, Play of the Game. That's probably what I use the most. And I really don't deviate outside of that. I'm going to kind of just continue. I clean my vault out completely. I'm going to continue to hoard until the day comes that, like, okay, it's time to use new stuff. Which of these seven Go figures is my Go figure? I will sift figure. through my Go figures and figure out what's best. Um, yeah, and then I'll pick the one. I did this before in Destiny 1. I kind of just, like, collect them all, and then, you know, one day I'll just go through and be like, all right, here's all of my arsenic. Well, not arsenic, but they're all the same. Uh, here's my Vestian Dynasties. Which one is the best one for this archetype? And I'll keep that one. Would you call that the Vestian Dynasty? Yes, that's the Vestian Dynasty. I had a feeling it was. But I'll let you guys talk it up, because I have not deviated outside of those loadouts 
Well, Bonesy, last week you mentioned, um, I forget which one it was. Oh, you mentioned Go Figure with Headseeker on it. And ever since you did, I've been looking at all of my my four, four bursts for Headseeker. Um, I did get a Bygones drop that's that's pretty good. It's got high caliber range finder on it, which is fine. feels pretty good. Um, and then today uh, I had a right side of wrong drop. And this one is like technically a pretty good roll. It's got head mm-hmm. seeker. It's got moving target. It's got drop mag on it, which is like pretty nice. What I've found is that it's cool in PVP because that head seeker perk changes the, the guardian resilience math. I cannot get down with it in PV at all. Like it's a little clunky for PVE. I've I've kind of used it in Gambit a little bit, especially if there's a nice big open map. The new Dreaming City Gambit map uh, oh, plays to it really, really well. But yeah, I mean, it's a pretty high range, high impact pulse. Like it definitely has that feeling where you know it's not working within that range. It's it's similar to the feel of a 150 scout. Or something like that. You're like, ooh, I love getting these Polaris Lance explosion kills, but the second anyone pushes me, I'm screwed with this thing. So I'll use that stuff on like Altar of Flame, maps like that, maybe the Castle one or whatever. I never remember the name. Uh, but I also have a broadsword, and it's like, okay, that one fits better in a closer range. Do a little more consistent damage and a little less um, getting getting pushed too hard and of course the monster perk on it, but I, I like both and I haven't got a bygones yet. I really want one. I really want the raid one too, because it's a 450 with just amazing rolls and I did not get one to drop out of my two encounters so far. I did um for as long as I could bear it. I, I hopped into iron banner. I did get the iron banner pulse to drop. Uh, mine does not have a real, uh, a real right home to mom kind of roll on it, but just the, Base of the gun is um is really quite nice. Mm-hmm. I uh, if you can pick up one of these, I mean it's it's pretty popular right now. I'm not saying much, but um I see what everyone likes about it. It's rapid fire, um, but it's just really tight. It's got a good sound to it, like very tight groupings. It is a real good one for unloading. I also got a uh, bite of the fox to drop. That's the Iron Banner uh, sniper rifle. Um, my is, you know, whatever, uh, moving target hip fire on it. The hip fire is great for PV <laughs> or you're feeling saucy. Um, I have to say as a, as a primary slot sniper, um, I was just using it all day in, in, in PV today and, uh, it's nice. It, it hits pretty hard. It's uh it's the high impact one. Um, but the kick is not bad at all. It's got a real clicky sound to it. I don't know. I was pretty pleased with that one. And I think I got killed by it in Gambit a time or two. So, you know, it works for that as well. Speaking of snipers, I've had the Twilight Oath from Dreaming City for a while. And while I liked it at first, it's the Alone as a God archetype, super kind of snappy and fast. I don't really like those for PvP. They're very low impact. And I want to know that I don't have too much work to do if I do take an up close shot and need to switch to like a primary weapon. So it's not really my thing. And I've, you know, I've also liked snipers and gambit, but it's so low range. It's actually Mm. very low that it fits into like a mid to long scout range. And with gambit, people can be so far away where I don't feel like I have a good, a good shot because the head is too tiny and this thing doesn't have uh, a ton of aim assist or or, or large cone for the range. So I kind of want one of those high impact snipers. I had a terrible roll on the Gambit one, so I used it for light leveling and infusing or something like that. But I think I'm 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 in the in the market for a better sniper. I have the what's it called? Fate Cries Foul from Crucible, but also not my favorite feel on those yeah, sort of uh, yeah, EDZ style. So yeah, it's fine. It's it's serving the purpose, but if I find something to replace silicon and aroma in year two, that's really what I think I'd feel good with right now. I don't think we have that one yet. I think that that maxim that those are still the ones to beat. They are very good, yeah. But with the right role on one of these, either from Gambit or Iron Banner, who knows? Maybe you mentioned getting the uh, Dreaming City sniper to drop. I don't know why the Dreaming City rocket launcher likes me so much, <laughs> but I've got. I've got a lot of them, boys. I finally got one with cluster bombs on it. So it's like, all right, let's use that one. 
get rid of the rest. But, you heard uh, everyone was getting really mad about people using Sleepless in Gambit, right? That's the gun that has everyone upset. <laughs> sleepless <laughs> in Seattle. <laughs> it's a real button pusher. One thing that was interesting, I was, uh, while well, I found myself grinding Lost Sectors, uh, I'll finish that story in a little bit, and there's a certain set of guns that drop from Lost Sectors, I encountered quite a few rolls of uh, Dust Rock Blues, which is a uh, precision archetype primary shotgun. I think like in the first couple days of Forsaken, this mm-hmm. one was noticed. Um, and I have to say, I really like this gun. It's not, I mean, you still need a good shotgun on it, right? You need full choke. You, you know, you, you need, I forget what the three Accurized, things are called. Full, full choke. choke. Accurized. Um, Get a little open shot in there, maybe snapshot. There you go. Yeah, whatever Balligant had. Balligant's the best one. I just, that's all I remember, Balligant, <laughs> yeah. Balligant good. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, just, just for mixing it up, just to have a, um, I'll just have a, a shotgun with uh, with rampage on it. Um, I like it. I've been I've been using it a bit in the crucible. It's uh, it's it's pretty okay. Um, I also and you might you might see where I'm going with it. Um, I got a 18 Kelvin's to drop, and I thought, oh, oh, that's kind of fun. I bet you <laughs> can guess what I was up to. <laughs> um, I do want to talk about one thing, um, which is auto rifles. I think we're in kind of a weird place with auto rifles right now because it's like, look, everyone got so sick of those Omelon 450 autos. Like, take your pick. There, There's a lot of them. We all use the hell out of them. We're all so sick of, of the, just that auto rifle sound that they make. And we've got some auto rifles in Forsaken that feel different. Um, I actually... Um, I, Deleted a million of them, um, but I was just playing with a with a misfit today because it dropped highest light level, and I was kind of like, it feels pretty good. Like it's very stable for for being kind of uh, you know for being pretty fast firing. Mine came with quick draw and high impact reserves, so like it felt real quick. But like man, I just can't get down with it. I had the tiger spite drop, which is the dreaming city one. Um, decent roll on this one, super stable, really nice open sights, but it's just not Otto's time right now. Mm -hmm. Like there's a stickiness that was there when Uriel's was king. That's just not there anymore. But I think more than that, it's because time to kill has gone down. The math doesn't work out for needing to be out in the open tracking. And look, you still do work with them. They're fine leave a comment if there's one that you found that's working for you. But it just seems like we've sort of left the era of auto rifles. I can't, I can't really think of that many times I've been killed by one recently. Well, we've, we've talked about seasons in the, in the past and it has been pulse rifle season for a while. So yeah. Yeah. And I think like part of it was figuring out how the new time to kill would work. And the new time to kill has a lot to do with, precision shots and historically autos it's not like you hit only headshots with those things and i think it's the same reason a lot of people are like are smgs good do i still use one i don't even know and it's in a weird spot especially with shotguns now so yeah i could see i could see why either of those weapons just don't necessarily fit in everyone's sort of mentality and sometimes it's just like well what feels good what you know, are we told is good and that's what is good because you see it so much. Uh, it's all about that perception of the meta now too. So for right now, we've got pulses, scout rifle damage is still being messed with. That was in the, the TWAB recently and yeah, special weapons, hand cannons. People keep saying there's some sort of bug. I don't know. Hand cannons feel pretty good. Ace of spades is the best feeling gun I've ever used. <laughs> Yeah, we we were uh, playing together bones this week, and uh, you were going off. <laughs> well, we had With a like game just like, that, not oh, a special. Yes, yes, that's that's. Part of what I love truly is that I feel so good with that ace of spades in my hand that I'm hitting flow state, which I've not truly felt in a while. Especially maybe just the stress of comp, you can't really get into flow too well. Um, but just like going off and feeling like. I like using this weapon in multiple scenarios. I'm not panic switching to something else. Uh, I started running it with the 
the Ikelos SMG just to like mix it up. I'm like, all right, what if I just don't shotgun? And it felt felt great. That's a good loadout because Ace of Spade just feels solid. And to me, like, yes, the time to kill is great. Having that sort of extra damage, faster killing is always good. But to me, it just felt great because it's always there for you. Like the perk is always up. You've got those bonus ammo. The reload is good. It's got that faster reload, which I'm always down for on any gun. I'm not getting caught trying to force it play because oh, a kill wait. clip is active or whatever. How, it's just we, good. I feel like we don't me- mention the best part about this gun enough is third eye. Like just having your radar up all the time <laughs> is awesome. It's just dependable. It feels good. And it's really what, what I want from an gun? exotic. It's all yeah. the exotics. It's always up. It's the same reason of like, you're not messing with risk runner to make the arc thing happen. You just know it's gonna, when it shoots you, it's passive. It's there. You can trust it. It's always solid. And you know, more exotics should, should want to live up to, to Ace of Spades and be like Ace of Spades. There's, there's some fun ones in there, but right now it's very good. There's a little secret about Sturm damage that I'm not even going to say on the show, but that thing's a monster too. But you know, right now, Ace of Spades, baby. I've got a thought about Ace of Spades. Um, I went and got it. It's fun. Fun little quest. Not too bad. Which they um, changed. <laughs> got mine Wait, they for real. It? No, the, the, today, uh, the, the patch notes from today say that you don't have to kill gambit invaders anymore. Just kill anybody? You can just kill anyone. I don't like that. I had to work for it. I had to work <laughs> for it. Other people getting it for less makes it less valuable to me somehow. I got mine in two games. I said holding my broadsword. <laughs> <laughs> You guys really hyped it up for me last week, and then I went out of town. I was like, all right, I got to get this thing. I got to buckle down. And it is, without a doubt, fantastic. Great. Like, the bonus damage bullets, fantastic. The third eye, fantastic. The reload animation, just all the things about it, great. I'm not getting down with it in PvP. I don't know what it is. What? Well, You I like- need to, I, I had the same feeling, Birds. you need to uh. spend more time with it. <laughs> That's simply it. Like as soon as you get into like Bones that said, the flow state with this gun and using those extra like those super powered bullets to your advantage oh. when you get them. Absolutely. I I no, I like I, I understand it and I can see myself I flipping out and liking I it. I don't think you do. <laughs> Fair. Fair. How many point. times do we have to teach you this lesson, old man? <laughs> <laughs> Fair. Fair point. Um you know, I like, I think no! <laughs> I'm going to, I'm going to get this thought out. I'll yeah. just, uh, All right. just have you're going to regret just, it. Well, he, here's the thing is the, the experience that I had that kind of made me go like, this wasn't it is, um, I was playing against it against a team of people almost exclusively using it, ran into some fire team. And I could tell that they were all mouse and keyboard players and I was going Ace of Spades versus Ace of Spades on controller, and I wasn't hitting it, which is not to say it's not great on controller. It's sticky. It is fantastic. But I just felt like in that scenario, because it's the dominant gun right now, that it's just like it, it felt like playing Last Word versus Last Word in D1. Last Word's a fantastic gun, but you find out real quick where on the Last Word skill curve you were trying to use it against people who were good. I felt the same thing happening. So it's like, okay, I got to get better at it or just use other stuff. But I think that like, that's the part of it is that it's so hot right now. And the people who have it tend to be the better players that, um, you know, just when you get that feeling of like, why doesn't mine work like theirs does? They kill me so fast when they have it. <laughs> like, that's the feeling that I kind of got. Oh, come around. Give me a minute. Mm. I think the voice was wrong on that character. I think it's more like, Bungie! <laughs> <laughs> I worked real hard for mine. <laughs> hey guys, I got sleepers in me. Like, nice. <laughs> Put that shit off because I don't <laughs> play PV, but then it's really good. So I had to go get it. And I had to go get a bunch of resonance stems. Fuck that noise. Well, don't now that. you got to do the Leviathan and grind for the catalyst and then grind a thousand kills with each of the Ecolos nah. weapons to masterwork it. Nah, I'm good. <laughs> 
I'm good. I got it. <laughs> That's like the, the, like end like of here, the story gr- for me. Grind out all of this stuff so you can have like a very small decrease in your charge time. Yeah. I love it. It's good. Uh, you guys do a <laughs> chaperone quest yet? Yes. You like it? It's objectively very good. I've never been great with the chaperone. I'll give it more try later, but I'm leaving it to people who I know are just like having more fun with it. I'll tell you this. Chaperone uh, is an absurd PVE weapon. Like I, I wouldn't use it for a DPS phase, but for clearing like yellow bars when you're a little bit under light, um, it's real effective. Hmm. Uh, it's it's good in PvP. I like it. Um, it's cool. That'll be a good uh, Luna's Hal pairing. True. Yeah. Well, yeah. um, this is exciting. I got the Black Talon, the exotic sword, just through like luck of the draw. But it's a weird experience for me to have something that other people don't <laughs> already have. So birds in Discord, is this good? Yes. You're the, the only one who has it. Know. I've heard it. Does. <laughs> just use it. Remember this moment. Uh, no, it's fun, man. It's uh, it's like that one. It shoots. Uh, it's the sword, and it shoots the thing. It's um, it's bones. When you were talking about it, you described it as a style weapon, which it absolutely is. I think you know, play of the game still a great choice if you're trying to get the most kills uh, and not die. But um, I don't know. It's real fun, and I like it better than the uh, what you call World Line Zero. It's pretty cool. I like it. Is it like? You hit shots, like you throw the little beam. Does it feel like bolt caster kind of thing or is it a little easier? It does. Um, I feel like it's a little bit easier to see and follow because the dudes are a bit smaller and you don't get the electricity effects. I also want to say it's got a little, and this might just be subjective because, guys, it's been a minute. Um, I feel like it's got a little less, um, not drop off, because not damage drop off, but just like uh, like that that projectile kind of drop over time where mm. it falls down. It's got less of that than Bowcaster does. It definitely takes some dialing in to, to get set, but it's definitely not like trying to, you know, lob shots with sky burners or anything. Uh, it's pretty good. And if like I'm playing quick play and I'm not playing for, for power, you know, like let someone else pick it up, uh, not using exotic, I'll pop it on. And um, yeah, it's a fun one. You know, you have to use it because not a lot of people have it, so... Right, I got a style on them when they go, <laughs> what was that? Well, I still have the chance. No, I get it. I get it. That's a lot of responsibility. Well, we got some questions from you guys on Twitter today. We're going to talk about those, but not before. A quick word from our sponsor again this week, Acer. If you want to be the best, then you need the best. It's a predator. Do, 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 do. You can level up on the go, and uh, look, there's a lot of powerful engrams out there. A lot more than before. You got to do the work. I wish I had had one of these last week. It's hardware that's as versatile as it is strong. It's the Predator Triton 700. It's got a CPU that packs a punch with the Intel Core i7 processor. That's 7th gen. Uh, And the design itself is so sleek, so minimal, you'll forget it's there. Of course, you got to have the graphics card. They got the NVIDIA GeForce tech. So you're going to get that FPS you need. You, uh, you don't have to worry about your frame rate dropping out. You're going to have a good time. It's thinner. It's faster. It's quieter. Don't forget, it's important with the laptop. You don't want some loud fan. Say hello to the Predator Triton 700. Man, I need this so bad <laughs> because... There's nights where, you know, you just want to sit on, you know, sit on the couch, but also you're thinking about them and grams. Give me them grams. Think about them beans. I mean, and grams. (laughs) I want to sit on the couch. I want to watch movies with my wife and uh, sit around with my dogs and uh, don't want to ignore them. So it would be amazing to just have a laptop and sit there and play this game and just do the do the little things. Don't have to get too crazy with it. That's it. You go to Acer.com. You click on store and you enter coupon code CRUCIBLE at checkout to receive 10% off. That's Acer.com and enter code CRUCIBLE for 10% off. It's taking everything I have in my power to not go to Acer.com and enter code <laughs> CRUCIBLE for 10% off because I want one of these, but... You could also probably do some <sighs> spreadsheets on it, too. Not the time yet. 
I, uh, I'll tell you what, I sat down and uh, made me a spreadsheet, real high powered spreadsheet, lots of tabs. See, that's the thing. People make a lot of individual spreadsheets. I like one giant spreadsheet with <laughs> too many tabs in I it. I like to have all of my eggs in one basket so that when uh-huh. I lose it, it's all gone and I can be that's very th- angry. <laughs> that's the thing. You don't lose it, but you're going to need a seventh gen Intel Core i7 processor to keep up with that many tabs. All right, we got some uh, we got some questions from the Twitter. Yeah, we haven't uh, pre-screened any of these. Do we just go for it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I, I, like I don't want to look. I want to. I want to be surprised. I always like these. Okay. Can I just say, um, I did not buy an Acer Predator right now, but literally just bought one of those giant uh, cat-sized hamster wheels. Mm. Really? Yeah, I. Uh, I got Ooh. high hopes for it. Let us know how that goes. Yeah. And one of them's allowed to go outside. The other <laughs> one, not sure about. Well, I, but, but the question was, what did you just buy on the internet while thinking about buying an Acer Predator 700? <laughs> what is cat wheel? Hot what is sauce. cat hamster wheel? Oh, I talk hot about sauce. hot sauce too. All right. First question from Lost Souls. Ah, hey, Lost Souls. Check him out. Uh, music last week. Yeah, he was the music last week. Uh, why is facing higher skill players considered the only way to get better, but facing great, better mm. weapons considered unfair? That's a good question. Um, I, you know, the weapons one, like, I don't know about unfair, but there is a certain kind of feeling where it's like you're getting, you know, you just have to hide because someone is going to map you with sleeper simulant if you step out and you don't have yours on you. And you're in a position where you're not like in a good spot to run out and try and try and flank them or whatever. Like that's not as much fun. I would say the reason playing against players that are better than you is good is because they punish you for making mistakes. Mm-hmm. And that is like I feel like a lot of improving at video games or at anything is after a certain point, it's not so much about developing your skills. Like you have to do that to give him, but you just can't force it. But what you can do is recognize your mistakes and not do them. And when you play against poor players, they will let you run through sniper lanes. They will let you, um, I don't know, like whiff a melee and still get another melee in. Good players don't allow for those mistakes. And so while you can feel like you're going off against a lobby full of bad players, um, you go up against the real players who just move around. They've got the same tools. They've got the same powers as you do. They just do it better. Uh and then you go back and you watch your footage and you see what you did wrong and you go, oh, yeah, I stood there. They knew I was there. They surrounded me. And uh, then I missed my shots. That's why I died. Yeah. I mean, it's, uh, it's, it's, that's pretty simple words. Yeah, good pretty take. Simple answer. Okay, next cue. It's from my boy Kensta. He says, let's talk about Way of a Thousand Cuts and how fast this can melt the primeval. Also, probably the hottest topic, the sleeper simulate. Yes, a couple of Gambit related cues. I actually just unlocked Wave of a Thousand Cuts. I finally leveled up my Hunter. It's the first one I picked. Super feels awesome. I'm like so sad for the Nova Bomb right now. It's not its time, but I'm sad for it because like it's just not as good as this. Yeah. Uh, and, and I was thinking about that. Like it truly does melt. If you stack it with a melting point or something like that, you can do boss damage. Uh, pretty outlandish right now. Right now, I think like only the most in sync teams are just like destroying their primeval in three seconds. And that's maybe ridiculous. I haven't run into anyone so good at that yet. But I will say that after playing stuff like Dawnblade Bottom Tree in Gambit, where I know I can use it for all scenarios and I can go invade and just like wipe the team, that when I do go in with this like one time super and I want to save it for that boss damage, it's like, okay. No supers for me. I get one opportunity and it's just throw it at a big boss. So in, in that sense, it is at, le- at least, you know, taking away your opportunity to have like a massive invade. And if you waste it on an invader, you you don't feel that skilled. You're like, oh, wow, I, I needed that to kill him. OK, so, yeah, it's very good right now. Very good. Uh, so, I mean, I, I've i been singled out with someone using this on me, which like felt a little wasteful. Um, specifically in Gambit, but, um, I think it's, I think part of Gambit is understanding that you 
shouldn't hold on to your super and you should be using it frequently, but because you're just going to constantly be getting it back um, throughout the match. If you're playing right, mm-hmm. like if you have you know your masterworks going and you're following your teammates as they're cleaning things up, it's really easy to get your super back. And something like Way of a Thousand Cuts, it's got me thinking that like, I kind of need to start my hunter. <laughs> and I, I've picked it out. When I start my hunter, eventually I will pick the Way of a Thousand Cuts. When I start my warlocks through this this campaign, I'm going to pick Nova War because those are the two most interesting to me. Oh, I guess Sleeper Simulant too. Yeah, they it's, addressed it's good, it. Right? It's gonna it's gonna change. Uh, Hamrick went into detail. They're going to adjust the aim assist on it. We'll see. Um, yeah, I mean, it just it's a dominant force in the fact that so many engagements engagements just involve it. And all the all the tweets about like, oh, you can counter it unless you're a dumb scrub or like, OK, great. Like you dodged a sleeper. Yes. But I think it's just the fact that it's so present is reason enough for them to be looking at it right now. So, uh, yeah, we'll see how the change takes effect. I like this. The subtle the subtle nudge instead of the the smack with a hammer that it's getting. They're like, oh, yeah, we're just going to see how this does. And it was a very quick response too, so that's cool. Yeah, I've, I got a lot of responses like, "Well, there goes Bungie nerfing things into the ground again." I'm like, "Well, they really haven't done that in a few months. Like, it's not really been their mo since." They're also you know, very, very cautious about this one. Right. Exactly. So I'm not. I'm not super worried in that sense. I think that's a little old fashioned, Bungie. All right. Next one is from TK hates you. <laughs> Ace of Spades Gambit quest change. If I've already completed the quest, should I not worry about other people and just live my life? Or should I shit myself in rage all over the internet? I feel like I can confidently say you should shit yourself in rage. Definitely the last one. Yeah, just make it public, you know. That that works out. We'll all feel a little bit worse. Post a podcast and say how, you know, you did it and no one else did. Uh, next one is from Woodhouse. What does bones smell like? Oof. Um, birds, you want to attest yeah. to that? Well, I would. Um, <laughs> I say this because we just saw each other, folks. Everyone's like, yeah. <laughs> well, no, no. I, I think this is this is a great question, Woodhouse. I uh, Not yeah, the one that cue. came to mind, but um, yeah, good cue. Good cue. I would say, Bones, for the most part, you smell pretty neutral. All right. I'll take it. You shower. A fair, like, a like you know, you're, you're a clean person. Uh, I've never gotten like a whiff of BO from you. You seem pretty fastidious. You know, maybe you're wearing a scent, but, uh, you know, like you got a nice flavored deodorant or something. Um, <laughs> but I personally kind of- deodorant? The flavors. Well, you know, it's just like every time I see the guy, I'm giving him like bones. I would say two to three hugs minimum every time we see each other, unless it's just the two of us, in which case it's a very awkward handshake. <laughs> <laughs> but like at a party, we're going to hug a couple times and I never go like, ah, oh, man, he's wearing something. And I like that because, you know, you wear like a little, uh, like one of the milder flavors of Old Spice and like that yep. is already possibly too much. Anything more than that, it's like, hey, tone it down, right? <laughs> what what do you, uh, what was, um, what was the name of Jason Manzukis's uh, perfumier? Oh God, that snake uh, stuff Dennis or something. Feinstein. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. You you don't want to. You don't want to. If they can smell you when you're walking down the street, that is a lifestyle choice. But it is just not a great day to day. So uh, yeah, he smells fine. In my best Manzukis impression, this stuff will kill you. <laughs> that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Uh, uh, yeah, I actually have a little bottle of uh, Rule. If anyone remembers what Rule is, it was a version of Abercrombie. It was one of their stores. It was one of the first jobs I had. And I was a model for Abercrombie and Fitch. And I got that shit all over me. I breathed fierce for like two years. Uh, but I keep this little <laughs> bottle of Rule because it's now like $4,000 on eBay. <laughs> if you get their like, <laughs> that's your retirement their, like, cologne. Discontinued right cologne. But yeah, I've, I haven't put it on in like, four years so special extreme occasions i suppose otherwise some clean old spice we're spending so much time on this question next cue from nathan anderson where's the line when adapting ends and this might need an adjustment begin no need to call out examples but philosophically 
how do you all grade when you've beat your head against the wall enough and it's time to constructively criticize? Well, this episode feels like a good example of that. Uh, we are in a time of change, a lot of new things. Um, a lot of change has been made based on feedback and sometimes outcry. But I think like always, I'm always keeping in my head where it's just like, do I just want a fun game that's like mixing it up versus like, am I specifically mad at something? And if I'm specifically mad at something, I'm probably going like, wow, dude, you need to adapt and like figure out what yeah. about this is pissing you off. If it's something like say sleeper simulate where I'm just like, wow, I would love to see what a different invade looks like. I'm not really mad and I just want to see some health in the game. So that's my line. Usually when I think that something needs considering is if like there's a giant swing where everyone starts using it. Like, a yeah. very noticeable swing where someone you can't go a game without one person in your lobby using that thing and using it like it may even be someone that's not quite good at using it and they're using it effectively and you're like hmm that seems a little off <laughs> yeah there's been moments it. like that yeah like I usually just like you said just try and let it let it ride and if I'm really trying to avoid something, I'd be like, okay, what can I do differently? Is there anything I can do differently? Um, I'm not one to kind of jump towards changes. Like I kind of like the thing it's like movies. I don't like to direct movies, but like have someone else direct a movie for me (laughs) and, and I like to enjoy their work. So that's the same thing with video games for me. Like let, I let them kind of make the thing and I, I, I enjoy it in its current form. I'm just going to say, um, this is my opinion. I know I am largely in the minority when you look at the Destiny community. And I say this as someone who hosts a Destiny podcast that talks about what's good and what isn't and moderates a PvP-focused Destiny forum and has interviewed Bungie employees and has, you know, like, has a... Occasionally, a couple folks at Bungie listen to the show. It's not my place to to give feedback. Like, I'll tell you if I don't like something or something's annoying. But like, when you go into like, oh well, it needs to be this instead. It's just like that's not my place because I'm not good enough to get mm, feedback. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Like the 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 first idea. Like, this is some life advice right here. The first idea that you have, like the thing that you improvise, doesn't matter how talented you are, doesn't matter how special you are. Like, odds are it's wrong and your idea is bad. Mm-hmm. Like that's, that's just the default. Like you have to try things and edit them and try things and edit them. We do not have the ability to do that. I, I don't see, I don't in particular enjoy being an armchair game dev. Here's the thing. If something's really good, it's not going to be good forever. Use it, use it and win while you <laughs> still have a chance. And then Seriously. it won't be good. Something else will be good. Use that instead or not, but that's the choice that you make, you know? It's fine. These things are all just a flash in the pan. Can you remember what the meta was 11 months ago? Of course not. It doesn't matter. The thing that seems so good is probably s- still in the game in some form and nobody uses it anymore. So Mida Uriel. Like, chill on it. I was just going to say, I think it was Mida. And then literally in a party chat, like last night, someone was like, I'm going to try out Mida again. I wonder if it's pretty good now. Yeah, right. <laughs> Cammy made a video the other day. Mida Uriel's. Yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> literally the yeah, other that's day. It. Just uh, it's it's you know life. It's all ephemeral, right? We're all just leaves on the, the river right, of that, life. Next question. <laughs> okay, yeah. Next question, please. For right. love of God, I want to power through some of these because I know the answers to them. Jacks jocks. When is the next Crucible wrap? Mm, maybe never. Uh, Seth Martin, how viable has two primary play been for you? If so, you what have you been using? Ace of Spades and SMG. Talked about that earlier. Uh, the Rogue Robin, best new super, and why is it Blade Barrage? Well, Nova Warp's pretty dope too. Oh, and dope. okay, from Sinister SS, what are your thoughts about trying to chase down a skating Titan while you're in Arc Strider or Spectral Blades? Should Titans be the fastest class and the tank class? So cue probably for us PC guys where Titan skating is a reality. I don't, I don't really know if I have any thoughts about it. I want to say I like going fast. I would like to go. I would like the ability to go just slightly faster using the built-in speed just slightly 
and then have no one be able to skate. Like, if I just go a little bit faster, I would enjoy it. We could have some speed cooldowns. I'm going to demo no, game for a like, second. God, maybe go super no. fast for a little bit. What oh, if, no, what if just to, like, slow Ugh. everyone down, you sprint, and you if you stop sprinting, you try to sprint again, you can't. Oh, shit. Remember when that was a thing? <laughs> I can't believe I forgot that sprint lock used to be a thing. Right? Ooh. Oh man, fuck that. Now here's <laughs> the thing, right? Like if you are using your arc strider and you find yourself trying to chase down a Titan and that's it's either you get that kill or you don't, you are doing it wrong. You need to pop them on top of people. You want to get in the middle, panic, panic super it, enjoy the chaos look. Titans are good at a couple things. Um, I wish they had more than like Two boo boo grenade choices across the whole class. Yeah, just yeah, use don't don't use it on them or use it on when right on top of it. Mm. Do other stuff. Moving on. Know. It's Jeremy asks tacos or cheeseburgers. Oh, cheeseburgers, man. Yeah, I mean I love both, but <laughs> I, I I would say um in terms of like what's going to give me a better peak experience, it's going to be cheeseburger, no question. But 90% of the time, I prefer tacos just because it's like... I eat more tacos, but yeah, I thoroughly enjoy all the time. a cheeseburger when I eat one more than I do tacos. Oh, so. I actually have a, a cheeseburger fun fact. Um, sorry, you guys Save it for the cheeseburger fun fact episode of Crucible Radio. <laughs> no, 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 uh, no, no. Dr. Hold Zero on. Hour wants to know what no, is no, the no, secret no, to on. birds' is amazing I, hair. <laughs> Oh shit, man! That's a great that's a great one to distract me from this. But no, I am taking that personally. By the way, um, no, because because I appreciate volume. I'm all about the volume in your hair. Oh yeah, you gotta have gotta have the volume. I've got a great head of hair. It's just genetic. I don't know what I did to deserve it. You got to get it cut fairly frequently, otherwise it's gonna flop over. I always wait too long. Uh, here's the thing, especially if you got short hair, buy a blow dryer. It takes like 30 seconds to dry your hair. You don't have to put a bunch of uh, goop in it. You can cut your goop usage down by like 70%. And uh, it just, yeah, it sticks up. It's got volume. It stays the way you put it. It. Uh, I, I just started doing it like uh, six months ago. Swear by it. Don't don't take a shower with that, with that low blow dry now. Game changer. Okay, moving on. Uh, Michael Stegmeyer has a question. I'm dying a lot in the crucible following the release of destiny. Is there some kind of bug causing this? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, stop doing it. Yeah. Stop it. Do Don't a, do it. Uh, Cut do it the, out. there's a blizzard thing and you do like inspect elements or something like that. And it does like a clean, try that. And then if up, not down, up, down, left, right, a, B, try B, the B, Konami start. code for sure. <laughs> yeah. Just safe. Always try the Konami code in any scenario. Do that first and then come back in there. Uh, if you, if it doesn't work, ask us. Okay, here's a question from our buddy Zia. How do you feel about the move from quests for the top tier crucible weapons? Now they are available outside of the season, and so there isn't as much of a rush to get them. Is this an improvement? Or does them make does it make them less impressive? Referring to Luna's Howl, of course, which you can acquire in any season now, as well as the broadsword. Um, uh, I'm, I'm doing that. Uh, that that broadsword quest um and it's no fucking joke i uh <laughs> that's a like even just the first step like that's a lot of pulse rifle kills that's a lot <laughs> of valor resets i i think it's fine man like they they made it challenging enough uh, yeah. and for the record you know those two things in each quest lunas you have to get to 2100 and broadsword you have to reset your valor five times those cannot be done like without one season's time. So in that sense, you still have to do something like season four is important. If you want either of these weapons, if birds, you sit too long on that quest, you just have to start over with your resets, which puts you to the end of season five. So there you have a little bit of incentive to play, but overall I'm okay with it. I like that. It doesn't force everyone into parts of the season into the like playlist. So it's not like at the very end you're having all these people rush to finish a weapon. Like the grind for Red Rex at the very end, there was a ton of people in there that were like really good just being like, oh, nope, time to get it. I kind of put it off. 
And uh, mm-hmm. there's a lot of like really stacked teams and it got really difficult. So I think this should help it spread out a little bit over the season. Not so much concentrate it into you know, that last like, oh, I forgot to do my homework. <laughs> Time to do my homework. Yeah, you are not going to uh, accidentally get a broadsword. <laughs> that's uh, unless you really like pulse rifles. Yeah, that's that's not accidentally going to happen. Good cue, though. Okay, last one from Mike Honcho. What's <laughs> your favorite purple grenade launcher? Hmm. Play the game. <sighs> yeah, I would have said. Um, I would have said Aura Wings. Because I just had a real special time with it. Um, but it's not as play of the game now. Play of the game is just so good. I don't like any of the new ones. I've, I've really tried to like them. I've got one that's highlight that I'll use for like melting a boss or whatever. But play the game, man. It's just too good. Uh, well, I have seven masterworked edge transits just to get a variety on the stat boost, <laughs> just to test them all out. <laughs> I am out of masterwork cores. I do not get any more. And um, I spent them all on that. So edge transit would be the answer for me for sure. I'm not lying at all, Uh, but that's it. Thank you for the cues, everyone. Uh, Guys, I have found the cheeseburger quote. Oh God. Okay. uh, Okay. Okay. So bring us home. This is from the New York times, 1947, when apparently the cheeseburger was a new thing and people were freaked the fuck out of it. I quote, the hamburger bars about the city are featuring cheeseburgers these days along with their main stock and trade at first the combination of beef with cheese and tomatoes which are sometimes used may seem bizarre if you reflect a (laughs) bit you'll understand the combination is sound gastronomically the italians for example are famous for their veal parmigiana which gourmets agree is good (laughs) (laughs) wow Uh, also, this cheeseburger recipe features two thirds of a cup of evaporated milk because it was God. 1947, and those motherfuckers were putting evaporated milk in everything. Wow, Birdsy <laughs> would have loved it. <laughs> they agree, it's good. Well, good to know. Yeah, I've been transported back in time, but at least I have my jar of mayo with me. I'll be the mayor. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't with you at first, but you did bring it home there. <laughs> uh, everyone who milk. made it through that Guardian Con episode probably knows what we're talking about, but thank you for well, listening, everyone. they couldn't everyone. hear it. <laughs> I think yeah. that's it. Are we I done? We're next week. Are we done? Are we done? Oh, Bones is hungry. I can tell. I'm we're done. starving. Let's go. <laughs> okay. Bye. Go eat. Goodbye. We got music coming this week from Public Underground. Check them out. Soundcloud.com slash public underscore under G. It's Public Underground. Pretty good. Yeah. Rage Against the Machine, Tom Morello in there. It's great. Go check them out. And hey, if you're a musician, we are looking for the next round of music to play on the show. This is uh, this is how it happens. It's real simple. Just uh, your, your single, your MP3, your album list track your new project and uh send us an email crucibleradio at gmail.com thin 18.9 millimeter chassis i really want one of these yeah i know birds that's how big my chassis is
Discover the Predator Triton 700 today. Go to Acer.com, click on store, and enter coupon code CRUCIBLE at checkout to receive 10% off. That's C-R-U-C-I-B-L-E. Dun, dun, dun. Andrew Yeager yeah, put the Intel chime in. Um, Swain, does something something how about my chassis fall under topics and language related to sex, which we're not supposed to discuss in the ad? Oops. <laughs> Something, something, my chest. I didn't read the ad, actually. So. Delete that, Andrew. Yeah. Nothing suggestive. Suggest- well, suggestive. You know. Suggestive. Okay. Not suggestive. <clears throat> Hello, everyone. Swain here. You know that Crucible Radio is your source for all things Destiny PvP, and I know you want more than just this video, so make sure to head on over to crucibleradio.com to find all of our past episodes detailed crucible maps, t-shirts, and much, much more.